Galaxy 666 by Pel Toro. Session 38. Contact with the indescribable thing from beyond was grim. The aliens withdrew a little from them and went into a huddle on their own. So now we know, said Ishklaw. We know a great many of the basic underlying facts pertinent and relevant to them and their presence here. I suppose they've got an equally fair picture of us and what we are doing here, said Korzak. They're certainly odd. He and Ishklaw exchanged meaningful glances. Very odd indeed, said Ishklaw in a quiet, measured tones. I rather feel that they are regretting having made such frank contact with us so rapidly. I think that at first, perhaps, they may have underestimated our strength and our position. A violent exchange of information, an exchange as rapid as that which we have just completed, doesn't always mean that the assimilation is as rapid as the exchange. Very often it's quite the reverse, said Korzak. The more information and the more rapidly it's pumped out, the more concentration is being directed toward the absorption of information. Nothing is being directed, or practically nothing, to the assimilation and analysis of the information, the use of the information. All the knowledge in the entire empire could be stored, and most of it is stored, in the memory banks of the great computers. But if you took the memory bank away, what have you got left? I see the analogy, said Ishklaw. In other words, if all the knowledge in the world, if all the knowledge in every world, if all the knowledge in every star and every galaxy, if, in fact, every piece of information in the universe could be recorded on microtape and stored away, that knowledge by itself would be absolutely useless, unless there was some form of analysis and interpretation. Knowledge is nothing unless it is used. Wisdom is a fine and beautiful thing, but wisdom without some kind of executive power or some kind of administration doesn't seem to have any purpose or function. It's like a library full of books with nobody to read them. It's like an endless film with nobody watching it. It's like switching on the audio video phone when there's nobody sitting in front of the screen and letting it play away forever and ever to an emptiness, a horrible, frightening emptiness. Empty knowledge is a terrible thing, said Oski. Having gotten the knowledge, we gotta start doing some analysis, said Bronit. Agreed, said Ishkla. Double agreed, said Oski. Korzak was nodding. This Galaxy 666 is certainly more than living up to its reputation, said Ishkla. As though the place itself were strange enough, we now have made contact with an intelligent life from beyond the Empire. Don't let's overestimate the importance of our Empire said Bronit. That doesn't sound very patriotic, murmured Korzak. I don't mean it to sound unpatriotic, said Bronit. After all, patriotism is only what you make it. The right kind of patriotism is a splendid thing. But when we start applying a narrow nationalism to our empire, in the same way that the old nation states of Earth used to apply a narrow nationalism to their foreign policy and outlook, before the coming of the United Nations, and for some years after, in some cases, we're going to find our empire facing the same problems as those old nation-states. Nationalism, if it is misdirected, can so easily lead to that mass suicide which lurks behind that hideous three-letter word, war. Agreed, said Ishklaw. No, said Oski, if we start feeling too proud of our empire, if we start feeling too exclusive and too imperial, we're going to find ourselves fighting a war over this apocryphal planet, this enigmatic planet, this planet of mystery here on Galaxy 666. Fighting a war? asked Ishklaw. How? I think I see what he means, said Korzak, and motioned toward the aliens. They want this planet. In their own way, they have an empire, too. It must be small. At least we think it must, in comparison with ours. Our empire covers most of the known universe. Ah, there is so much emphasis on that word, known, interrupted Oski. A good point, said Ishklaw. As I see it, broke in Bronit, our empire has certain important parallels with the old Roman Empire back on Earth. Certain parallels from which we can learn much. Draw those parallels, invited Oski. Korzak and Ishklaw were looking at Bronit with great interest. Oski looked a little challenging. Well, let me put it this way, said Bronit. 
our Roman Empire extended from Britain and Spain in the west right across to the Asian provinces in the east, Palestine, Syria, Egypt, further still. I'm no historian, said Ishclaw, but I know a bit about the old Roman Empire. It's one of the few pieces of history which nobody is allowed to miss, no matter on which planet he is brought up. It's the one bit of classics they give you, the one piece of earth history that everybody is sure of getting, the Roman Empire. And the second piece said Korzak, is the classical culture of Greece in the 5th century BC, particularly 5th century Athens. I can even remember some of the names. There's no need to quote them, said Bronit, cutting short the spat of words. What we've got to do here and now is discuss those things, he pointed at the aliens, because there's no doubt that in their own strange way, the way they're flapping their little pseudopods together, they are discussing us. I'd give a lot to know what's going through their little hairy minds at this moment, said Ishclaw. So would I, said Bronit. I have an idea that it may bode no particular good as far as we're concerned. Ah, said Oski, good is only a relative term. When all is said and done, is there any such thing as a standardized external ethic? Or are ethics only subjective? Do they exist in the mind of the thinker only? Is there some great external objective standard? Oh, shut up, snapped Bronit. You sound like a traveling sophist who's escaped from a lecture hall. Thank you for your few kind words, replied Oski. His lips were smiling, but his eyes weren't. The thing is beginning to get us again, said Ishklaw in a rather warning voice, and we can't afford that, you know. As if this blasted planet weren't enough on its own, grunted Oski. We've now got aliens contending for the thing. Korzak nodded. Here ends. Session 38.